Today I learned that when it snows in New York, manhole covers go missing. Summertime means long city bike rides, dead trees and rats, and well, something happens with dogs in July. I'm Renan Meyer, Google Developer Advocate. Join me as I use the core function, 30 gigabytes of weather records, and 130 gigs of New York City public data to investigate correlations, if not causations, with weather in New York City, with BigQuery. Trapped in the unchanging, timeless stasis of this top secret and totally real Google data center, I don't get much in the way of weather. But that doesn't mean I can't use BigQuery to see how the weather affects the lucky people who get to experience outer world. For example, as the temperature rises into the 70s, people take more city bike trips, and more of those rides start from the outer boroughs. But that's not really surprising. Where it gets interesting is the unexpected correlations, like snow and missing manhole covers. To find more weather correlations, we need to dig through 200 gigabytes of data. BigQuery is fast and cheap, but it'll be faster and cheaper if we make our data a bit more manageable. The NOAA Global Summary of Day Tables include a dozen weather variables recorded from 9,000 stations dating back to 1929, and we don't need all of that. We'll extract just the weather variables we need and replace the 999.99 values, which are used to represent null, with zero so that our averages make a little bit more sense. Airports tend to provide the best weather data, and in New York, that means LaGuardia and JFK. So we'll select just those and average their daily records. The NOAA tables are split by year, so let's combine everything from 2009 to 2016, the date range for our New York data sets. Saving the result to its own table results in a very manageable 200 kilobytes. Now, using our weather table, let's see if temperatures have any effect on cab rides. Unlike for city bikes, this graph doesn't show a strong pattern, but what other interesting patterns can we find? We all know that correlation doesn't imply causation, but maybe, if we're just looking for interesting patterns, we can use correlations as a way of finding them. Calculating correlation is a pain in that it's hard, and graphing every possibility would take forever, but thankfully, BigQuery includes the core function to do all the hard work for us. This query returns the correlations between each of our weather variables and each of the primary causes of motor vehicle accidents. The results table suggests two possibility. Accidents caused by slippery pavements related to snow and wind gusts related to runaway cars. Graphing both against time, there's some evidence that slipping accidents increases when there's heavy snow. What about gusty winds pushing runaway cars down the streets of New York? I'd like it to be true, but does the data support it? Well, Let's say for now it's too early to tell. We've only got data for runaway cars for the last four months, and when we graph it, there's just not enough there. So where to next? BigQuery includes every municipal complaint made to 311, so there's dozens of different complaint types that we can try and link to weather patterns. Using the core function, I ran queries to find the top correlations for temperature, snow depth, wind speed, wind gusts, and rain. The most likely candidates? Temperature relationships with heating complaints, dead trees, and rat sightings, snow depth relationships with missing manhole covers and illegal parking, and higher wind speeds with lower noise complaints. You can find a link to the full table and the queries here. Now it's no surprise that the call volume for heating complaints is significantly higher when the temperature is lower. What is surprising was a similar correlation between missing manhole covers and snow depth. So either the abominable snowman is a New Yorker with a penchant for manhole covers, or if we have our causation reversed, manhole covers are what's preventing New York from being swallowed by a snowpocalypse. Now, whether it's a snowman or a snowpocalypse, when graphed over time, there is a fairly consistent pattern of heavy snow and reports for missing manhole covers. The amount of snow doesn't seem that significant. Maybe the holes in the road are more noticeable when the rest of the street is white. Snow depth and illegal parking turns out to be a dead end. Blocked hydrant complaints are trending up as is snowfall and while double parking had some coincidence spikes with heavy snow in 2010 and 2016, there wasn't really much else there. Either way, New Yorkers, maybe stop parking in front of fire hydrants? Not cool. You notice that there were a lot of strong correlations with temperature, such as complaints about trees. Now the clearest thing in this graph is that there's a seasonal pattern affecting both, which is made even clearer when you look at the monthly averages. So let's take those monthly averages and seasonally adjust our results to see if there's a pattern beyond the time of year. This graph measures the proportion of the month's tree-related calls to temperature minus the monthly average. 
and there's really not much to speak of in terms of trend. Now, wind speed had a strong correlation with noise complaints. We know New York City has windier weather in the winter, so let's just seasonally adjust for that right away. If we graph all our points as a scatter plot, you can almost see a relationship, but there's also a lot of noise. Here we've put our results into buckets of one degree, averaging the volumes for each bucket. And the relationship is much clearer, but it's also a little bit deceptive. It totally hides the variance and gives undue weight to the buckets of the extremes that represent far fewer samples. Which is why we have the magic of the hex bin graph. Here we can graph all the points within a given hex and weight the darkness of each hex by the number of points it contains. As a result, we can see a trend from the overall shape of the distribution, as well as a heat map of measurement distribution. For wind and noise, you can see a triangular pattern that implies a weak negative correlation. It suggests a greater likelihood of getting more noise complaints when the wind is low, and significantly fewer calls when the wind is five knots above the monthly average. Particularly for loud talking, which almost gives us a band in a diagonal line for both the overall distribution and the area of highest concentration. Neither approach explains barking dogs, though. It's troubling. Why do barking dog complaints go down in summer? What happens to the dogs? Are they on vacation? Do they share a house in the Hamptons? Are they locked outside? Are they locked inside? Why are they silent? I think we've stumbled on something here, something big. We've got to get the message out. There's no telling. Check out the link below to find the larger subset of possible weather complaints, correlations, and please dig in to find other nuggets hidden within the data. As always with BigQuery, your first terabyte of processing each month is free. Go to BigQuery today and create your own New York City visualizations and share them with us using the Today I Learned with BigQuery hashtag. And don't forget to check out some of our other Today I Learned videos and the playlist. And of course, subscribe to our channel and follow our blog to learn something new with BigQuery.